finals, best of three. Texas Wesleyan is third first. Zero. Zero. And Texas Wesleyan has a serve on their racket. Emil Santos to start us off. Huge down the line forehand step around from Grant Lee. Now this is something we've seen once again. The finals in 2013. Grant Lee and Justin Wong won, I believe, 11, three, four, and two. The average of three points per game for the opponents. Yes. And they are uh, definitely coming out here firing on all center cylinders. We definitely have Grant taking that huge forehand cuts. He opened up the match with an, a beautiful forehand down the line. And did you see that recovery from Juddy by right near the ground, able to take the point back? Strong footwork there, Juddy getting way around the backhand corner. Both players pinned in the backhand court, still able to win the point against USC. A little bit of a miss hit off the top edge of the blade there. The flip game from both Justin and Grant at USC is what made them so dominant. Over the table, they were deadly. And, you know, in doubles, you know which half of the table the serve's coming to, so it's got to be really low and well placed. Well, this match is going to be a little bit different from the last match that we saw, that other uh, round of 16 match where we saw it was very lopsided uh, or opposing styles where one team wanted to open up with attack early and the others were very content on a short game, uh, starting a game off with a push and soft top open play. Uh, and there you saw already uh, the J.D. Bye of Texas Wesleyan being called or given a warning for his serve. This time the break off the top of the net works in the favor of SC. Recovery did not get the point, but they're still trailing by two at the first towel break. And it's interesting, we've seen Juddy Bai blocking the ball back and sort of changing up the pace, giving some trouble to Grant on the follow-up shot. Now this pairing from USC, obviously they're former champions, so they've you know been there, done that. I know the Texas Wesleyan tinkers around with their um, their pairings uh, oftentimes year after year. Uh, J.D. Bai, a veteran for the Texas Wesleyan team. Emil Santos, a veteran on this Texas Wesleyan team. They've got to feel obviously very confident not kn knowing that they have experience uh, right next to each other. Definitely a strong pairing out there for the Texas Wesleyan pair. And that's the first flip kill from over the table that's really been effective so far in this match for Lee. And it's interesting, the santos by combination out there, they're two of the strongest players in Wesleyan modern play the recent years. There's also they're, they're two of the more consistent ones we've seen. Uh, a lot of the faces from the Wesleyan program has changed. Um, this year, not really that much different. They have a couple new faces, and we'll get the chance to talk about them a little bit later, as I know a lot of you all at home have uh, talked about some of the uh, newcomers to the Wesleyan program. Yeah, I heard some rumors on the ride over about players that will get confirmed, but uh, pretty exciting stuff. Again, the level of play here at this tournament, just incredible. And Santos there having a little trouble on the block. You could see him sort of rehearsing how to keep his wrist on that spinny loop from behind the table. The Grant Lee spin shot from just off the baseline. There you have it again. And Santos is pretty much trying to get himself into this. It's back-to-back -back errors. You never want to think of the former champion as a weaker uh, player on the table, but as we talked about earlier this morning, doubles is different. It is not singles, and uh, you have to find your, your uh, positioning and placement much sooner. And we only have one shake hands player out there, Emil Santos, but as far as the standout player, Justin Huang, as strong as he is, is definitely, for lack of better ter terms, the weakest link on the court, is really going to have to play above his level. And he does in doubles. He's delivered his touch game. He's got a powerful forehand and put away shot. His uh, modern backhand, the reverse pen hold backhand, he's not quite as confident as, say, Grant Lee. And, you know, Juddy Bai, we don't see quite as much. We'll get to see if his backhand comes into play here. Well, I definitely saw Juddy Bai working on his uh, reverse pen hold backhand yesterday. 
and uh, from what I saw, it looked pretty sharp. We'll see if he gets a chance to unleash it here in this doubles match. That is just too good. Beautiful. The second bounce right at the baseline of the table to take the first game 11-7. Man, Joe, the service length. I mean, you could see just waiting on the back end USC's players to loop that ball when it comes off, and it never does. Yeah, I mean, that's his perfect placement and, and really being able to use your spin to your advantage and not allowing to allo let the ball get too deep on the table, but, you know, de making it deceptive enough that it looks like something you can hit, but uh, you really have to think about it twice sometimes, whether or not you, you uh, play it safe and push that ball short or you take your cut. I know a lot of the top players are able to decide uh, very quickly the height and depth of the ball and, you know, make that quick decision Absolutely. over the table. Right, and it's the, the, the hesitation that costs him the shot, you know, setting up the third ball. If you think it's going to come off the table and it doesn't, by the time you play a defensive shot, it's not going to be a quality one. And if you realize it's coming long and you play a push, you're not going to get it right off the bounce as easily. It's going to be tougher to keep it short. Again, this is the quarterfinals of the men's doubles here at the TMS Collegiate Championships. And right now, the former collegiate national doubles champions, Grant Lee and Justin Huang of USC's Ping Pong Posse, are down zero games to one with the serve. Justin's going to start it off. And again, that half-long serve barely coming off. Santos able to contact it, but not well enough to get it over the net. And a deceptive right there, it's, you know, the delivery looks very similar, but... Justin Huang's serves can be loaded with backspin and the delivery looks so similar to the dead ball. Yeah, even if the ball looks like it's sitting up a little high, it's still heavy underspin. Absolutely. It's the first point for the Texas Wesleyan pair this game. Now, earlier today, we saw players and teams uh, establish who was going to be the controlled player who keeps the ball in play, who's going to be the offensive player. Have we seen that yet so far in this game? Well, it's interesting. That is a strategy that some doubles players use, but in general, you're going to have to be as aggressive as possible unless you're playing a short shot, whether it's a flip or a loop. No one's playing too defensively. I think a block is almost the last resort out here. And with Justin and Grant of USC, I mean, they're both going to take the shot whenever they can get it, whether it's a flip, any, anything they can do other than a touch shot short. Yeah, they opened up game number one taking some huge forehand cuts uh, inside out and down the line. Both uh, players did. And you see right there Justin taking that uh, forehand flip to the open court. Unfortunately, it sails a little long as they, um, they're still out to a little bit of a lead here in game number two, 4-3, up against Texas Wesleyan. And again, you see the forehand power of the USC team. We all we know that's where they're going to go. They're both pin holders. They're both right on top of the table taking the ball on the bounce. Um, you couldn't really ask for a better strategy. Unfortunately, they're both righty-righty. Uh, we have seen quite a few lefty-righty combinations today. Uh, that would have been really exciting to watch that much forehand firepower coming at you. Right, and for those of you who are a little bit newer to the sport, the righty-lefty combo is to the advantage. You Both players able to hit with their forehand a lot more often, a little easier for the footwork of the team. And the break that happened the first game against USC losing a point with the around-the-net shot from Juddy Bayan here. You can see Santos keeping it positive, making sure his teammate doesn't let it get in his head too much. This is the best three out of five match, so every game matters that much more than in a four out of seven. And we've seen some close ones earlier today in these three out of fives where it looks like the match is going to get out of hand and just quickly the teams come right back in and uh, get themselves in the match. Heavy spin shot just clipping the top of the net. Juddy by really getting low on that shot. I mean, when he contacted that, it was not in a great position, but, you know, doing the best you can from down low to just keep the ball low to the net and skimming the top of the net is pretty much as low as it can go. Yeah, great players come up with great shots. Whatever it may be, net or edge, they're, they're still put themselves in a position to be in the point. Unlucky there off the top. 
Parker at Lee's ball sail a little long. Right now we've got 7-6. Uh, J.D. Bider received the serve of Grant Lee. Yeah. And that one goes a little bit long too, but again it stays close enough to the back of the table that it's an uncomfortable shot. And earlier, the point before that, Justin Huang's push was the one that came in a little bit late. He's going to have to make his feet get to the ball quickly to keep it short when he needs to. And the over-the-table intimidation factor on the receive. Again, Justin Huang has the kill shot, so it puts extra pressure on Jetty Bai to keep his serves perfect. And there it was. Uh, that ball almost looked like it was on the opposite side of the line, but at the last minute, it came back into the court, and Justin just didn't make that footwork adjustment to get himself in place. And it's tied up at eight points each. Long now with the serve. Right in the middle. That's where you got to hit it. If you can't beat someone wide, right on the elbow. Grant Lee knows it well. And that's what USC is probably wanting to establish that they did in the first game, the two-ball attack, serve, get the ball up, and take their big forehands. Difficult shot, but he's got to play the risk. That's another thing. At, you know, at this level, players know that they have to take the risky shot sometimes, that they have to push their comfort zone a bit because if you play that shot soft, your chances of winning the point are much worse than going for even a 50-50 shot to finish the point sometimes. Yeah, there were some matches we watched this morning where, you know, you could play yourself into position to take your shot. If you miss the first one, no problem. You'll you get another chance, but not today. Well, not right now, at least. And that was the backhand that you saw Juddy by warming up over the table, cross court, deep into the backhand corner. And now they have game point to go up 2-0 in the best three out of five. Just a beautiful roll on an, an awkward looking type of shot, but uh, he made it look really easy. Spin shot kept low and Wong having trouble blocking it back. They're catching up. It's a two-point closer game than game one, but it's a 2-0 lead for Emil Santos and Judy Bai to take out the returning champion pair from 2013. Yeah, the, the former champs are definitely got their back against the wall. This is not a best of seven. This is a best of five. And they find themselves down 2-0 here in this quarterfinals. I mean, th the pressure is on now. Do you feel like an aggressive team tries to go even bigger and potentially forcing themselves even into more errors? Or do they set themselves up to get into the point, potentially give their opponents a chance to take some cuts? Maybe they can incorporate some form of defense into this next game. Uh, but that's kind of difficult for a very, as you would say, an offensive team to do to take a step back from what your norm is. Well, you know, looking at the coaches in the corner, by the way, and we're going to talk about their tactics real quickly in a moment. You've got Mark Hazinski, um, one of the top players in the United States for the last decade in the corner of Texas Wesleyan. And you've got Michael Schur, um, a player who's, you know, a tournament player from Taiwan, playing at USC, probably around the four spot. So it's a little bit of a mismatch in coaching. As far as what USC is going to have to change, um, as much defense as we're talking about, I think it's going to come up to the setup shots, the touch shots, getting them off the bounce, keeping their half-long serves half-long, and keeping the, the short shots shorter in the middle of the rally. They're going to have to be in near the table to get their flip into play and then be able to take a quick step back when the loop opportunity is there. And you can see Justin Huang is just way out of position for that shot. Strong shot from Grant Lee, but Huang's going to have to get right back into the table so he doesn't take a chop block from the backhand side. Another errant forehand from the USC pairing. Now, is it the glasses? In 2013, correct me if I'm wrong, didn't Justin have glasses on? That's a great question. Um, I believe he... He had kind of a Kurt Rambis glasses with the utility right. strap in the back. I think that's what's missing right now. The boots with the fur? No. No, not the boots with the fur. No boots and furs, just a strap. Right, I believe he got contacts. I remember, yeah, playing at the Spin Dirty Dozen when he came in without his glasses the first time. It's like Jameis Winston and his contacts always squinting off to the side of the uh, football field. But there you have it. The Wesleyan team is up 3-1 here in this third game, and you've thinking USC, they've got to make a move and it has to be right now. Right, their first point this game was not the way you'd hope for it to be if you're there. And there it is, a big forehand. The whole lot, you can see he's pumped up. 
And that's what we're used to seeing from the USC pairing. Just taking that forehand early and right off the bounce. Very smart play. That was the one, the touch shot, again, right off the bounce, keeping it short, causing some trouble, taking away the attack opportunity for Texas Wesleyan. Quickly, that mini lead is uh, evaporated, and USC is back in this third game. That's right, three in a row. Four. And counting, we will see. Definitely a lot of heart from the USC Trojans, the ping pong posse pair out there. Santos with a strong receive there, but well anticipated from Justin Wong. He was right in to get it off the bounce, keep control of the point. And that's four straight points from the USC pairing. Five. Five straight points from the pairing. Six. This is going to be a great commentating job. I'm just going to be counting, hopefully, uh, one through uh, 11. Uh. <laughs> How many licks? Emil Santos now having scored in six points. And a block on the backhand side. And right now the footwork that we're seeing from Justin Huang and Grant Lee, the synergy. And I think honestly, the footwork of Justin Huang is contributing to both of them having slightly more comfortable shots and a little higher percentages all around. Backhand blocks, open up loops. And it seems like uh, the this point series here has gone by really quickly. We were just looking at 3-1 and it's 8-3. Um, the momentum is on USC side. They obviously got a lot of things going on right now. Um, I don't know if Wesleyan's flustered, but they're an unlucky ball off the top of the net and that happens. You know, they end the run, but they still got a comfortable 8-4 lead here in this third game and you've got to think um, they're excited to be able to just pull out this first game and get themselves back in and allow Texas Wesleyan to be thinking about some things. Tricky to say, not too much comfortable at this level of play. Seen greater comebacks. And right now a two-point run, suddenly it's a two-point game again. As far as flustered, the shot that we saw Justin Huang miss two points ago was actually a shot that he's going to make, you know, 80 to 90 percent of the time. The pressure there, strong receive, well placed from Grant Lee, keeping Santos off balance. When we get back to Justin Wong's underspin serve from the forehand side, I'll tell you a little bit about that. It's fascinating. Tries to play the short side of the table, just missing the edge, but still a three point lead for Grant Lee and Justin Wong. Grant has some pretty special serves too that look like they're going to bounce one way and kick the opposite type of ball you don't even touch. And there, once again, an unlucky push that goes long. Wesleyan right back in this at 7-9. Seven, nine. Seven, nine. Emil Santos to serve. He had a very strong service ending to game number one earlier where it was perfectly placed. And Grant going for the short side of the table. The timeout's being called by Michael Schur of USC. Earlier, Adam, you were going to mention uh, Justin's Wong underspin serve and something that he did uh, recently. Yeah. Uh, first of all, I was wondering. I didn't hear Michael Schur actually saying anything, and it looked like the timeout was not acknowledged. I don't know. So far, it doesn't appear that Grant Lee and Justin Huang either know that their team called the timeout, which is weird. I, th I thought there's usually consent needed. They're able to turn down their coach's timeout. Um, still standing out on the court, not coming back. I guess they feel that with their teamwork and experience level that talking amongst themselves might be to their advantage over speaking to their supportive teammate and coach. And sometimes you're just so in the moment with each other, you don't even really look to see what's going on around you. You have to imagine when your coach calls a timeout, though, to not go over to the corner. That's, that's pretty unusual. The Justin Huang serve, when he does heavy underspin, it's one of the heaviest under, underspin serves I've ever received. I mean, the first three times, you know it's underspin, and the first three times you receive it, into the bottom of the net. And we've seen it out here. It's been effective as well. Spin shot, little bit of a break, funny contact from Justin Huang, but it was spinny and slow and quite difficult. Now it's two game points for Grant Lee and Justin Huang of USC. Well, as they say, he paid for all that blade, so he might as well use it. <laughs> I've never heard that, but I like it. And 
And this time a little break off the top of the net for Santos. Quick apology and it's a one point game. Justin Huang will see if we get that super heavy underspin serve. And what was 8-4 is now 10-9. There it is, USC pulled out that game, much needed to stay in this match. It's 11-9 now, they still trail 1-2 in this men's quarterfinal. And point for point, you can see the scores up there. It's been 27 total points for the USC pair, Grant Lee and Justin Huang, where Emil Santos and Jetty Bive scored 31 points. Seems to match up with the two to one lead that the Texas Wesleyan pair has. Now Emil Santos was the singles champion, I believe in 2013, the same year that Grant Lee and Justin Huang won the doubles championships. And Grant Lee in the singles side actually beat Emil Santos the following year, the year after his championship. The year before, he beat Chung Lee from Mississippi, who ended up winning the men's singles championship the next year. So he's capable of anything. And they're even more lethal as a doubles pair when they wake up. And as we saw for eight points in a row down 0-3, they were definitely woken up for a good part of that game and managed to still hang in there and pull it out. We'll see how they keep things together for game four. Yeah, obviously would have liked to have finished off that game strong when they had an 8-3 lead, but they, uh, the experience of Texas Wesleyan, you know, they stayed in the point. They didn't try to press and, and force themselves way uh, back into that game. Uh, they kind of allowed it to happen knowing that some of those runs and forehand streaks that happen have to come to an end, and that's what happened. But uh, USC was able to overcome and uh, take that, that third game. Beautiful shot, cuts under the ball with some side spin deep into the backhand court. Even if Santos contacts that ball, it's going to be an awkward shot, very difficult to read and counter. This time a little softer from Huang on the receive. Over the table play in the ambitious forehand of Grant Lee from the backhand side of the table. But now it's split even at one point each. Just missing the line. Justin Huang has been using that cutting receive, the underspin side spin with the forehand over the table. I Which can be a very difficult and deceptive shot to return because you're not sure if you want to really push it back or if you want to, you know, loop that ball back. And right there again, Grant Lee playing the short side of the table. It's a high risk shot, but he knows that that's what he's got to do to finish the point. Not trying to start a counter loop rally on the forehand side with these guys. You see how much Santos had to lift to get that ball. It came over super slow. And that's just because he was lifting so much. He's seen both himself and his teammate loop it into the net a few times so far this match. Well, smart of Santos to make the adjustment. Indeed, and this time it's a little bit shorter right at the back edge of the table, and he's not able to lift it over. So, Joe... As far as Emil Santos and Juddy Bai, have you seen anything so far this tournament on their road here, any of their matches? They unfortunately haven't been out on uh, this feature court, so they were playing on some outer tables. Um, obviously, it's one of the stronger pairings. Um, their seed, you would expect them, expect them to get this far. Uh, glad to finally see them out here. We did see some other Wesleyan teams out on table too, but this is the first time uh, that Santos and Bai have been on the uh, show court. Better place ball this time. Last point, it went wide to the forehand, and Justin Huang moving through the court was able to block it back. Pretty close to the table to keep the thread on. This time, deep into the backhand court was more effective for Jetty Bai. And you can see how quick Huang's moving. His feet is he's anticipating, but not leaving early. If that ball's on the table, Wesleyan's going to have a really difficult attack to deal with. And it was the right shot by, unfortunately, just overhit and looks like he carried that ball along versus actually finishing that swing. I'm just having to combat with the heavy underspin, you're almost uh, thinking, do I play a heavy, heavy soft top or do I try to overpower it early? I think on that one he was definitely trying to beat Justin Wong to the open court on the forehand side and just missed the shot. Right idea for sure. And that beautiful touch play there from both teams. Uh, USC coming out on top of that. They're up 7-4 in this fourth game. Justin Wong to receive Jetty by serve. 
the adjustment he's made on the receives. We've seen Huang early in the match trying the forehand flips and being carried away by the side spin. Now he's playing it soft, but not just soft, low and short as well, just completely jamming Texas Wesleyan's Emil Santos. Well, that's just credit to their experience, you know, wanting to make that adjustment, not being afraid uh, <laughs> to go away from, you know, plan A. And if you just saw that, a little magic trick from this camera angle, Grant Lee was able to make his racket appear on the other side of the table seamlessly. You can hear the come on. Grant Lee knows he's got to make that shot. Not an easy shot, but at his level with, I guess, the pressure right now, he's got to put that away. Well, he knows they squandered that 8-3 lead in game number uh, three and had to fight to uh, win that, and they don't want to do the same thing here. And it's a one-point game already, a bit of a run. I remember 7-4 for USC. Three-point lead down to one. Their touch play has been really good when they're keeping it close to the net, but right now it's been going a little bit long. An unfortunate break for Wong trying to play. It was sort of a half decision shot. It looked like he wanted to side swipe it deep into the backhand and then changed his mind, and that hesitation caused an uncomfortable shot to go out. And it looks like the progression of, of points over the past two games are identical. Wesleyan comes out with a, a mini lead. USC goes out on a run, and then Wesleyan fights right back to tie it up. And there's a side swiping underspin shot from near the table from Justin, but this time Grant Lee going big from deep on the table into the net and out. One more serve to tie it up, 9-9 in the fourth. You can see heavy breathing from USC teammates and fans in the crowd. And he left that serve a little long. I mean, For Jay sure. Bai took the right shot. He just overplayed it, you know, carried it long. He didn't have a whole lot of uh, a lot of speed on the um, the racket head there. So obviously, dealing trying to combat that heavy underspan, he had trouble with it. Well, I think the thing is the, the the deception factor from Grant Lee is that it looked a lot heavier than it was, as it appeared to you and me, and then and Juddy Bai for that matter, which is why he lifted it up and out. Subtle contact from Grant Lee. Again, to an outsider, you might wonder why Juddy Bai hit it out. Oh, and that was the point that they wanted. They had the Wesleyan team out of the pitcher, and all they had to do was place it right back down. A beautiful exchange from both teams. Um, great footwork there, but just pushed that ball a little long. It's interesting. Grant Lee had the opportunity to play the short side of the table there, and he usually goes for the high-risk shot. I wonder if he was thinking play it safe for the long cross-court shot there. And there it is. An Wesleyan takes end. this 11-9 in this men's quarterfinal match. Unfortunately, uh, the champions will not uh, have a chance to uh, bring another trophy back to uh, Southern California. But it was a great run, obviously, for the parent from USC. Um, not as explosive and, and some of the amazing shots we've seen from them in the past. But they definitely played a great match. And congratulations to the Wesleyan pairing of Emil Santos and Jedi Bai.